Since I came home in May, I do lectures uh, on schools and libraries and uh, institutions for you know young kids who maybe have drug problems or right. criminals. And I do this. It, it takes between two and four hours, depends on how how, lo how long time spent I have at the place. Okay. And I always I always get to a point in this lecture or, or talk where I tell that three things are necessary uh, to kind of have in you before you 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 can be authentic. And it's called on Danish ærlighed, kærlighed, særlighed. Which is you have to be true and speak truth from the point of view where you are at the moment. You right. Can, you can't do better. Right. Oh yeah. You need love and you need uniqueness. And, and and these three things you have to accept these things in order to be you. And when I do this, when, when I do these lectures, uh, I, I feel uh, for myself a, a great satisfaction because. I have the chance actually to express my experience and feeling from this bicycle journey. But when I try to talk to like my friends, and it's even one year ago I came home now. Right. For 24 year old guy, it's a long time one. Year. And till this day, I didn't have the chance to speak with one friend about the, the whole bicycle journey and my inner experience. And I mean, I wrote a stack of books like this during 20 months. Okay. Um, So I use these lectures uh, for this purpose and, and to communicate. Uh, and, and this brings me kind of to uh, to, to the next question: um, How to challenge uh, in daily life other people's uh, belief system or, or or the way people think uh, without getting stuck by fear and uh, anxiety? Well, there's two things really. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't ever seek to change anyone's belief system. That's never the that's, that's, never, the that's never the goal. Okay. Um, the goal is to communicate information in a form that they can access um, and understand without having to have done years of bloody research. That really means you bring things down into very simple words and explanations. Um, and because you know When I was a journalist, you, you realize that when I interviewed scientists and politicians and government administrators and all the rest of it, they would use jargon. They'd use scientific jargon. Doctor would use medical jargon. Um, politicians and administrators would use political jargon and uh, you know administrative jargon. And uh, uh, economists would use financial jargon. And I used to say to them, look. Um, I'm an idiot, right? Okay, I'm an idiot. G give it me in words of one syllable that an idiot like me can understand. And what I've realized is they couldn't. They couldn't. Why? Because they didn't know their subject well enough. If you know the subject well enough, then you can bring it down to the simplest levels. And what's happening now is technology like virtual reality games and computer systems and what have you are starting to mirror the very reality that we're experiencing um, and so that you have those as analogies to 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 explain apparently complex deep uh, explanations about the nature of reality and how we interact with it um, in very very simple terms but The information itself has to be powerful enough to get people to look at it and get people to be um, influenced by it, but at least uh, give it attention. And this is an important point. The base foundation of this reality is not this. This is just, this is just a, a holographic almost like a, uh, uh, a movie screen. The base foundation of, of, of this reality, this universe, including our own bodies, is vibrational information. The body's a vibrational field of information, interacting with a massive vibrational field of information that we call the universe. Um, it's from that level that um, 
that information is decoded through into this holographic level. That's what the body's doing. It's decoding vibrational information through into electrical information, um, same information, different form, and then the brain, indeed the whole genetic structure, is then structuring a holographic and digital reality um, that uh, actually only exists within us. It's not even out here, it just seems to be projected out here, but actually it's all happening within us. Um, and therefore, um, when you speak your truth um, with integrity, uh, the voice to ear information or the eyes to uh, mind information is only the holographic level of that communication. You're commu communicating with that person on a vibrational level much more powerfully than you are on the holographic level that we, we hear and, and see. And the information itself either in verbal or word or, or written form, or even, you know, heard form uh, on the radio, all that stuff, is itself an energy. And truth carries a very different and far more powerful energy than untruth, the lies, manipulation. Um, and therefore, it's not about persuading people. It's about putting out information, either individually or collectively, if we're on the media or something, that comes from a point of view of truth, uh, truth as we see it, because, you know, people say always oh, speak the truth. Well, I, I agree with that, but, you know, we're trying to uncover something that doesn't want to be uncovered, etc. So, you know, we can speak our truth when we know it's truth, or we can speak our truth as we perceive the truth to be at that point, although we may move on, but we better do, because we don't know it all, with new information. But at least we're speaking with the integrity of saying, either this is the truth as I know it, or this is the truth in this case as I feel it to be. And that integrity and that um, energy carries an enormous power um, which can affect people in a very, very powerful way. Not necessarily at the moment of the communication. They might go away and think, rubbish, but that vibrational communication has taken place at the level from which everything plays out. And, and, and that person may, a week later, a few hours later, a, a month later, be doing something uh, one day walking in the supermarket and suddenly it's like you know I think I think there's something in that and because it, it's 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 got through from the vibrational level into the conscious mind and also you can influence people without knowing it just by interacting with them there's a vibrational uh, exchange taking place and they might be walking down the supermarket three weeks later and think I've got it. I can see it. They might relate that to back to the fact that that that, that you 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 impacted upon them with that information communication on an unseen level, but they'll just get it. And who cares where they they got it from? They've got it. Um, so it's I do that, and uh, in the sense that when I go and when I write a book or where I'm speaking um, to an audience, I am not in any way trying to influence the audience as my goal. I am going out here to change the minds of these people. My goal, my motivation is I'm going out here to, to communicate information to people who, because they're here, obviously want, are interested in it. And then what they make of it is entirely up to them. See, it's none of our business what other people make of what we say. It's their business. Our business is to communicate and do what we say and be what we say and communicate what we say. That's the, that's the end of it. That's the end of it. That's the end of our, um, our part in this uh, interchange. It's for them then to say, well, what do I make of it? What do I make of it? What's my truth in the light of this information I've been, uh, have had access to? And then 
all, we must all respect what they make of it. If they say, well, I'll accept that bit, I don't agree with that bit, and, and, and I, I don't agree with that bit, but I, I think that's right, that's fair enough. What are they doing? They're expressing their uniqueness upon that information. What, what, what do I, I, I would like to see more than anything else is that I would like to see people express their uniqueness mm -hmm. because mind does not express uniqueness overwhelmingly. It can be a conduit for consciousness to express its uniqueness, but mind invariably um, relates to a program or a blueprint or a belief system and therefore doesn't um, uh, tends to conform to, to structures and blueprints because that's where its reality is coming from, especially the left side of the brain. Mm -hmm. So when you're seeing people um, express their uniqueness, you might not even agree with the uniqueness they're expressing, but um, they're doing it. They're expressing their uniqueness and therefore um, they're moving out of the control of mind and programmed, blueprinted, uh, this is how you must live your life because everyone else does. So that, that's the greatest thing that you can do for people is encourage them to be what they feel, what they are. I have a simple